I was out as gay when you were still prancing around talking about whether or not you were. <laughs> Wait a second, what did he just say? What did he say? Hey. Oh. Says you were both, I can't remember to be honest with you. Just, you said, I think you said, okay, why don't you shut just up for a moment? Straight, I think you straight, said, man. well, Douglas is I think straight. you said oh, that we're both, I, I, I think you said we're both cis, white, straight men. First of all, I am white. Secondly, I am a man. Thirdly, I've been out and gay my entire adult life, which is about 25 years now. I don't well, know how I was out as gay when you were still prancing around talking about whether or not you were. Oh. I did a brand deal for tampon. No, you didn't. This was 2020, and this is me dancing around. How? That's a major national brand paid me to make this ad for them on social media. And I wanted to say two things about it. I'm sure you've seen the hate that Dylan's gotten. Please find this video of Dylan's and watch it. I won't Dylan be. Is an angel, important, intelligent, uh, very, someone I care about very much. Irrelevant. And I made the video f for two reasons. So that women would feel less stigmatized. So that people who menstruate would feel less stigmatized because to cis men, let's face it. Menstruation is seen as gross, disgusting, a joke, and as someone who is does it? not menstruate, I'm non-binary, I don't menstruate. No I shit. I wanted to help end that stigma if I could. And I also, you notice I don't do a lot of brand deals. I did this one because I wanted trans people to feel better and not have, you know, trans men who menstruate and non-binary people who menstruate to not feel double stigmatized around menstruation and being trans. And then the hate came for me. And I want to say something to the ladies because of you, Twitter. Because you're not a woman? We should be working together to undermine the patriarchy. We are not your enemy. The more you fight for your box, the more you are fighting for a hierarchy of one box no. or the other. Fighting for difference take is not you. fighting for hierarchy. tell you what to do. Uh, the, but I know as a non-binary person, the more you police your gender role, the more you are policing the idea that one gender role is the best. Oh, how fake. It gives me a lot of emotion to talk about. Fake. Um, because I am a feminist and I will keep fighting. No, you're not a feminist. Even if you hate me to my core, because women are not second class citizens. Agreed. If I could have any anything, it would be that people just don't hate themselves as much. And I'll continue to do that uh, no matter what happens from here. Thanks for Oh, watching. how fake. Bye. Gender is like the inside filling of a donut. You can't tell what's is on it? the inside just by looking at the outside. Let's take this jelly-filled donut, for example. Usually donuts that look like this are filled with raspberry jam, but it could be strawberry or rhubarb. We just don't know. The same logic applies to babies. You can't know a baby's gender until they're old enough to tell you themselves. Sure, you can make an educated guess, but why risk being wrong? They literally do it at birth. why gender literally. reveal parties are so Even silly. before that, it's like in scans, they tell you having vanilla what the gender of the baby is. It could have banana pudding inside. In a perfect world, we just celebrate the donut, not the filling inside. Maybe we even give babies gender-neutral names to start so that there's no expectation of a gender they're supposed to live up to. Maybe we give them choices along the way so that they can figure it out for themselves. Like, what kind of clothes do you want to wear or what kind of toys do you want to play with? Maybe kids get to have their own gender reveal party so that they can tell the world themselves. If you want to be transgender, I don't even fucking have a problem with that and nobody else does. Nobody cares. Here's True. what they care about. You shoving it in everybody's fucking face. True. Everywhere they fucking look, saying that you're, you're the most protected class of society and you're saying you're the most villainized. Well, the reason you're getting heat now is because now motherfuckers are getting to the point where they're running into schools and killing people because of the perceived hate yep. that they're getting when in reality yep. you wouldn't even get the hate if you just leave the kids alone. Yep. This isn't hard to understand. But the reason they won't leave the kids, why won't they leave the kids alone? Why would a grown man dress like a woman? And Because you don't ever see it the other way around. You don't ever see women dressed as men doing the fucking dances and shit. It's always fucking men dressed as women doing the fucking dances in front of kids. True. And the real shit is we have a whole infiltration of pedophiles doing this shit. And y'all motherfuckers are celebrating and enabling it. And it's bad.
and people hate it. And guess what? They're not going to fucking take it forever. Yeah. Do you know how hypocritical your comment is? I mean, just stop to think about it. How hypocritical it is. You're telling me that other people's kids are not my business? Because they're not. They ain't your fucking business. What makes you think so? Because they're not your kids. Because it, you seem to think that other people's kids are your business. Which is why you're telling me to stop grooming them, leave them alone, leave our kids alone. Is it clicking yet? No. Is the hamster wheel moving? How patronizing? They are my business. No, they're not. Every single one of them out there. No, they're not. Those they're are my none kids. of your fucking business. Every single elder in the transgender community, those are their kids too. And we are happy and willing to welcome them with open arms. But you're not wanted. When you you're want. not wanted. So you're saying if you're not a woman, then you shouldn't have an opinion. Who does a guy get a right to say what a woman is? Women only know what women are. No. Are you a uh, cat? No. Can you tell me what a cat is? This is actually a genuine mistake. I am sorry I... Indeed. Oh, Christ. What? Okay, this is serial killer vibes. This is serial killer vibes. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Don't know whether it's morning or night. Only know it's sounding right. So come on in and let me <sighs> jazz hot, baby. On a serious level, what's liberating about this? You've got a, an obvious man dressed up in heels and a pink dress dancing around in their living room posting it on TikTok. And this is supposed to liberate people. Men do not menstruate. Only women menstruate. Now, you can call Cis yourself men whatever you don't want. don't menstruate, but trans men do menstruate. No, Same they as don't. non-binary people. <coughs> Only women. Menstruating is not exclusive yes, to it cis is. women. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yes, so it is. You're, to me you're, as to why my body you are, at If some your point, chromosomes are XX and you're young, you menstruate. No. If you're XY, you don't. Correct. Correct. But what about trans men and non-binary? They're not men. We're excluding a whole group Correct. of people They're women dressed as men. You are not a man. You can pretend to be a man, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Live your life. No one's Tell got a problem a with that. Is. Well, what's a man to you? You define a man for me. You have chromosomes that are X and Y. That's what a man is. So why are we just looking at the the the, the science of this as an the example? Science. When when we've learned sex and gender sex. identity are two very they're completely different things. They're not completely. different They are completely things. different. Completely different words. And sex is what you're born with, the sexual reproductive organs you have. Gender is what you identify with. They're completely different Well, I don't accept things. that distinction. You have to argue for it. You're just giving a conclusion. You're, you're just making it up. Just to piggyback on that, the signs of gender dysphoria develop very young. Like, you can see it in a three-year-old. And by the time they're four, in their three gender identity is really? pretty much solidified. So you see, will see the this is the issue. This is what we've all got a problem with. with. Very you can do whatever you want. True. The moment that you start true. trying to push it onto kids, it, that's when the problem arises. It's not on. All of the science for the last, all the science for the last 100 years has shown in boys who, who experience gender dysphoria between two and three, 85 percent of them simply grow up to be gay. Oh, I love Nothing wrong with that. The I other five, exactly don't interrupt, don't this interrupt, is, this interrupt is, and be rude. I will, the other five you don't percent think that dismissing an entire group of people straight, is being rude. And then there are one or two percent the transgender dysphoria persists into adulthood. At the age of four, a child is not going to know what emotional attraction means versus Correct. physical attraction. No, children, and it is, children do get crushes. This, no, no, no. this is a completely age-inappropriate product True. in front of children. 
Happy story. I had a moment last night with my husband when he got home from work, and uh, it felt, it, w- it was important. My husband is a ranch manager, which for all intents and purposes, that's blue collar. He's a blue collar man. He works blue collar industry in agriculture. Hard work. I am very thankful and grateful and blessed that I am able to be a stay at home mom to our three children. I earn an income from home as well, but he is the primary provider for our family. Yesterday it was 107 degrees and that man was out in it all day. So he got home last night and I was cooking dinner and we were talking about, you know, it's the end of the month, so this bill got paid or this bill came in, whatever, and everything's good, everything's taken care of. And I stopped and I thought to myself, he need he needs to hear the good stuff too. Yeah. My husband's a very involved parent, but at the same time, I needed him to understand what he had provided. So I stopped what I was doing and I said, Kenneth, because of how hard you worked me and your kids had a great month thank you and i thank my husband often for how hard he works in providing for our family and so he said you're welcome and i said no thank you for how hard you work so that your children are having awesome experiences because of it and he kind of looked at me for a second and again it felt important to me in this moment for him to know the the extra that he's providing for our family. So I said, you know, your daughter had Girl Scout camp this month. Your kids started swimming lessons this month with three kids in swimming lessons. That is not cheap. The kids and I went and got ice cream today. It was awesome. You know, we had our friends over twice for two different barbecues. We had an awesome Father's Day meal with my parents. And I said, thank you. Thank you for how hard you work. Y'all, when, when we first got married, I have seen this man go from making less than $25,000 a year annually when we first got married to making more than enough to not only provide the essentials for his family, but extra for his children and his wife. And in that moment, I needed him to know. I needed him to know we were not only okay, we, we are not only comfortable, but we're happy. We're happy.